Hello, I'm Dr. JC Lowen. I'm a clinical neuroscientist at Cognitive FX. Today, we're going to talk about long COVID. Long COVID, or very basically, when symptoms from an acute COVID infection last longer than four weeks, has been called a number of names, including post-acute COVID syndrome, post-COVID syndrome, and probably will gain a lot of other names moving forward. For the time being, we'll call it long COVID simply because the initial population who demonstrated and explained these symptoms call themselves long haulers. Now, what we need to understand is what is long COVID? What causes it and why are patients experiencing physical, cognitive, mood, sleep, and other types of symptoms so long after they've beaten the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus that causes COVID-19. Now, if you take a look at these long haulers from the outside, they may look completely normal. They can have a conversation with you. Maybe you'll just even stumble into them in the grocery store. But what they're going through is a lot more complex. These patients will complain of fatigue, bone deep tiredness and exhaustion that has no explanation. They may have changes in their mood. They may experience more depressive or anxiety like symptoms. They may not be able to sleep. They go to bed at 8 p.m. and keep waking up every hour. They have difficulties with conversation, slurring their words or tripping over their words. They may also develop headaches. Now, these symptoms and many, many others that are experienced by COVID-19 long haulers may seem very similar to what we've seen very commonly at Cognitive FX, which is mild traumatic brain injury. Mild traumatic brain injury, also called concussion, is when the brain shakes inside of the skull to cause physical trauma to the brain, which will lead to symptoms, especially acutely or early after the trauma, but which can sometimes develop into chronic issues, where patients will have post-concussion syndrome, a syndrome where you may experience concussion symptoms months to years after concussion. Sound familiar? With long COVID, we are still figuring out why exactly these patients may experience symptoms that are so similar to mild traumatic brain injury, but we have some answers. Let's dive into viral pathophysiology, or very basically, what does a virus do to your body? Even since the Spanish flu, we've known that SARS viruses have a unique effect on the body and the brain. In fact, after other SARS virus outbreaks, there was a similar epidemic of cognitive flus that no one could explain. We know now that when viruses enter the body, they can infect a number of different tissues. Specifically with SARS-CoV-2, again, the virus that causes COVID-19, it can affect a number of different organ systems. This includes your lungs, your heart, your liver, your kidneys, and yes, nervous system tissue. However, when it comes to these long-term effects, these long haulers are usually patients that didn't have severe acute issues after the infection. It's very unlikely that they'd be the ones in the ICU unit receiving care. In fact, many of them have very mild acute symptoms during their acute infection. So what's going on? Well, if a virus is able to infect so many tissues within the body, it's going to lead to the body trying to protect itself. That includes immune activation. The body will produce little antibodies and activate different immune cells to help gather up that virus and get rid of it. In addition, your body will be trained to then produce antibodies against future viruses. Now, with SARS-CoV-2, interestingly enough, the theory is that both the immune reaction and the direct infection and other indirect effects, including if you aren't able to get enough oxygen into your body, these may lead to issues in the central nervous system. In fact, many of these long haulers, it's considered that the indirect effects of the infection, so not direct viral infection of the brain or central nervous system tissue, is at fault for their chronic symptoms. So why is a concussion clinical neuroscientist talking to you about long haulers? Well, because of the similarities between the symptoms experienced by those with post-concussion syndrome and those with long COVID, we began to perform functional MRI studies on these lung COVID patients. And to our surprise, their brains look like those of individuals that have suffered mild traumatic brain injury. So the underpinnings of their symptoms, which include issues with what's called 
neurovascular coupling, so the pairing between the nervous system tissue in those cells and the vasculature has actually been harmed in some way by the virus or the virus's effects on the body. Now, much more research needs to go into figuring out how exactly the virus can cause issues with neurovascular coupling, but right now, we're more concerned with how to fix it. In fact, Cognitive FX at this point in time has treated completely six COVID patients. This includes an initial consultation, an initial functional MRI or FNCI, functional neurocognitive imaging, the type of functional MRI we perform here. They have undergone treatment or standard enhanced performance in cognition treatment, receive a second functional MRI, and then are very carefully evaluated after treatment for a long period of time. Our goal is to see how these patients may be very similar to our concussion patients or may be very different. Now, with these six patients, we've had some outstanding results. These patients' functional MRI results also improve just like our concussion patients. Now, this leads to a couple of conclusions. First of all, yes, we know viruses can influence neurovascular coupling. We know treatment targeting this neurovascular coupling can be helpful for long hauler patients. Now, you may ask, but these have to be different, right? These two situations, a viral infection versus a brain injury, there have to be differences in these patients. Absolutely. With patients with COVID-19, obviously there is a lot more attention put into other effects the virus may have. In fact, some of our patients present with quite severe breathing irregularities. Now, this doesn't mean that they have scarred lung tissue, but in fact, the way that their diaphragm moves and how they breathe was impacted by the infection. So we treat every patient as they come to us as a special, unique case. However, with the data we've already collected and the many future patients that are already on our way to us with long COVID, we are expecting similar results. So in conclusion, long COVID, post-acute COVID syndrome, or whatever you wanna call it, is going to be a severe issue in the years to come. Of the 30% of individuals who will eventually develop long COVID, there is hope. There are methods out there currently to image the brain and see where these mysterious symptoms are coming from. Each patient will need to be treated with special care and attention. However, a pathway to complete healing from long COVID is possible. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us or fill out the paperwork in the link below should you feel you're a candidate for what we do with long COVID patients.